My name is Safia Oakley Green. I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm Jamaican, Irish, and Costa Rican. Hi, I'm Sophia DeCaro. I'm 21 years old, and I am English, Indian, and Malaysian. I probably first realised that I was mixed race and that I wasn't white when I was at dancing, because um, everyone always used to have to get like spray tans for dance shows, and I never did. My the feet, the way that I look, the way that my dark hair or my hairy arms, people would make comments on. Um, and I would get the question quite a lot, you know, where are you from? Growing up around predominantly, or having predominantly white friends, um, affected me in the way that I didn't embrace my Asian side, I didn't embrace my, the side of me that wasn't white. I found that I would like try and get rid of anything that made me not what my friends were like. So like body hair, especially at dancing, was a massive, massive issue. I kind of didn't want to associate with that side because it wasn't what was celebrated with, by the people around me, it was what was questioned. So summer 2020 was like Black Lives Matter absolutely blew up over that summer because of there was so much exposition about how people of colour were being treated, specifically at that moment in America, but then everybody kind of joined in and explained it around the world and everyone was kind of like explaining their experiences of being a person of colour because I feel like a lot of people like to believe that it isn't a problem anymore. They'll be like, there's no slaves, there's no racism. Like they'll just like do that and cut it out. I think it erupted conversations that should have happened years ago hundreds of years ago. Um, well, the change would have happened hundreds of years ago. The conversations now, knowing what we know and being educated, and being in an educated society where we have access, um, you, the UK specifically, we have access to that education. We should have had those conversations a long time ago. So I definitely feel very accepted by like the white side of my heritage, because um, I grew up in a very white area. Um, and a lot of my friends and family members see me as white, like that's who they think that they say I am white. The result of me associating myself with just my white culture growing up and rejecting my Asian side, um, I don't, I feel I'm still, I'm in the middle but it's not particularly balanced. I don't feel as accepted by the black side of my heritage, I feel very like imposter syndrome when it comes to that. Um, so much so that it wasn't until recently where I could be like, I am black, because I was worried that I'd said something wrong. Because like I'd been so, I'd, not, I'd just not had any connection to it. I think the conversation about being mixed race in Britain at the moment is very, um, like it's something that's seen as desirable because of how you look, so it's been quite fetishised by the media. A growing trend that is a lot is mainly involved in social media is the fetishising of mixed race people, and I think it's particularly to do with aesthetics. Um, you know, the talk of wanting mixed race babies or marrying a person of colour so that they can have mixed race babies. It's really disturbing. I also find that, especially in film and TV at the moment, they like to lob everything into one box. So the mixed race character always has like a really stereotypical, like ropey relationship with their parents and they're gay. So they're like literally like, they lob everything into one one box so that they've got like all the ticks and they're like, yeah, we've, 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 we've talked about this, talked about that, we've talked about that, and they've given it to the mixed race character. 